Hey y'all, it is Sunday afternoon and it is crazy windy today. I was just out filming my members only April garden tour, which is actually gonna post tonight to my Milkweed crew members. And it is the last day of April, I know I'm a little late. Sometimes that's gonna happen. But anyway, um, if you don't know what the Milkweed Crew is, I do have a membership on my channel where they get exclusive videos just for them and I usually do a monthly garden tour. And that way you can see over time how my garden is changing, anything new I've gotten, how things are growing, all of that sort of thing. So as I was filming the video, I came across a few discoveries and I wanna go show them to you. How exciting. So, first one's right over here. My spice bush has some signs of caterpillars. Looky here. There's caterpillar in there. And looky here. There's a caterpillar in there. They make little tent folds. I know I've said this before, but I say it again because I got lots of new viewers. Anyway, they ma they make little tents and they fold the leaf over, and the little caterpillars are tucked inside. You can see its cute little self in there. So anyway, I will be bringing these two little guys in as soon as I'm done filming this, and I will also inspect. Oh, look, 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 look. There's another one right there. I will also inspect this plant for more. This is the spice bush, and it is the host to the spice bush swallowtail. And then on the other side of the garden, I was showing them a privet senna, so you can probably guess what I found on it and it's gorgeous and it's a big one and I'm like how how have I not found this little one before so let's go see this wind is is something else you guys I can't find it y'all it was right up here and I can't find it and I'm hoping that it didn't get eaten and that this ridiculous wind somehow blew it off and it's making its way back to a plant. Where did it go? All right, I'm gonna look around, see if I can find, I found it. Oh my gosh. It's like, I don't know, this one looks even bigger. Maybe this is a different one. Look at this. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Sulfur caterpillar. So I'm gonna take this one in, but I don't think this is the one I saw. I think this one is bigger. Oh my gosh, here's another one. Ah, this looks like the one that I saw. This is about the size, so maybe it just moved. So I'm going to move these two into the haven. And I'm going to take cuttings of the two stems, or the three, or however many I find of the spice fish swallowtails. What a fantastic find! You guys, there's a giant swallowtail laying eggs on my wild lime. And she is looking kind of rough. Like one of her wings is totally missing. A chunk. Probably because of this crazy wind. I don't know, but she's managing. Woo! Let's see if I can get in. I 
So I was just coming out with my floral tube to get the cuttings of the branches that the sulfurs are on and here she is and now I'm gonna have to be oh, looking for eggs there she goes so I brought a floral tube out now what I'll do is I'll take cuttings of the branches that those two sulfur caterpillars are on and I'll just set the cutting in the floral tube up next against my host plants in the butterfly haven because sulfur caterpillars are very particular and they do not like to be moved. They like to feel like they're in control of their lives. They're very dramatic that way. So you have to be sneaky about moving them. You can't just pick them up and move them like you can with monarch caterpillars. You got to make them think it was their idea. All right, so I've got my cuttings. What I do is I trim the plant closest to the branch it's coming out of because they do better with a thicker stem cutting. And then I trim off all the leaves, as many as I can, the lower ones, and any extra fluff so that the water can just go to the necessary. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> There's no place to go. There you go, back up the other side. Looks like this one has like some sort of little wound on its back. I bet that's from the wind too. I bet it got whacked with another stem. And then the other one. Is right up there. So I'll probably trim off some of the excess leaf stems here on this one as well. And what I'll do is I'll bring it, you can see there's another one in here in the enclosure. I'll bring it in and I'll just put it down at the base and kind of tuck it in the soil there. And so now it's firmly in the soil and actually being down lower, these guys have a little bit more protection from the wind. And eventually they will crawl off onto the host plant that is in here, which actually there are two hosts for them. There in this pot, there is the privet sun. I think I showed this to you before and then the partridge pea. So they have options and they can think it was their idea to make those choices. <laughs> and now while I'm in the enclosure, I want to tell you a couple things about it. First of all, several of you um, have been asking me like how do I think it's going to hold up to wind, especially if we have um, like a hurricane come through. Now hurricane, I can't say, but these wind gusts today are pretty strong. So it, it's not even showing any signs of lifting up, like the wind just flows right through it and it, it has been a non-issue. which. I am thrilled to see, as much as I'm not thrilled about this windy day, it's still absolutely gorgeous. Um, so there's a piece of news for those of you interested in setting up a butterfly haven in your own gardens. Um, this structure, which is called a crop cage, which I have linked below my Amazon links, is holding up well on this very blustery day. Now that I'm standing here looking over this way, I see a few more friends to show you. And actually, on my Maypot Passion Vine that's over there, I can see that the wind did cause um, the part that's attached to the wall of the Butterfly Haven has, the wind has made the stem break and the leaves are now 
dying because they're not attached anymore to the plant but I see there's two caterpillars on that section so we're gonna go move them and there's two monarchs in here which I am leaving in here for now because they just declosed today and I'm not sure that they're strong enough to deal with maneuvering in these winds that we are having oh and there's another fun thing I want to show you too <laughs> this one's really fun so here is the piece of passion vine that has that has completely separated it used to be attached here I'm sure that's due to the wind but there's also two little guys right there so we're just gonna pluck off this stem and I'm just gonna kind of set it down on the plant that's healthy and connected and then they can just crawl back on there is one beautiful monarch butterfly that he closed today and then a little ways down is the other one and maybe a little later if these winds die down i'll release them if not i'll probably come out tomorrow morning before i go into work and release them and even still they'll be just fine in here because i've got some tropical milkweed blooming that they connect her on isn't it beautiful Y'all, tropical milkweed gets such a bad rap, but you can't you can't argue that it's not a beautiful flower. My tropical milkweed is only growing in my butterfly haven inside. That way, if it goes to seed, um, the seed pods can't blow away, and it can't grow up where there's no one around to monitor it. So this is actually uh, an ideal use. If you love tropical milkweed, put a butterfly haven in and grow it in there. And that will stop the whole OE issue because butterflies aren't landing on it. And the invasive issue because the seeds can't spread. And I also have Mexican sunflowers growing in here that they could nectar on as well as red pentas so if there ever is a situation where they can't be released right away they have plenty to eat and even though i took most of my eggs inside for the giant swallowtails i did find two more in the garden that had hatched so i just went ahead and put them in the haven and there's one right there The other thing, I have this little picnic table bird feeder. It used to be out hanging on my crepe myrtle that died. And so I filled it with soil and threw a bunch of dill seeds in it. <laughs> and they're sprouting. Is that not the cutest? So I'll have a little picnic table that when that dill grows up, like the little eastern black swallowtails can have a little picnic. Oh, and I don't think I said this before, but um, if you wanted to join my channel membership and get access to my monthly videos, um, in the description box, there is information about it. I think beside my name, it says join in blue. I think you can tap it. It's only $4.99 a month. It's less than a cup of coffee. I used to say it was like buying a milkweed plant every month from my garden but milkweed has gone up and now it's more like buying three-fourths of a milkweed plant from my garden anyway i really appreciate it and that would be fabulous there's a sulfur butterfly out there flying all around that privet center that i just brought those cuttings in for oh my gosh i love butterfly gardening so these are my sweet joe pie weeds and this wind keeps blowing them over i've come in here today like four times and stood them all up again so i think it's time Woo! <laughs> i think it's time to just y'all look at the trees i mean 
It's crazy, this wind. It's April. What is going on? Look. So I think it's time to get these guys in the ground where they won't get blown away. And they've also had plenty of time to acclimate to Florida weather as recommended by Joyful Butterfly when you unbox your plant. But you'll have to wait and see how the planting of them goes in my next video. Because I think, I think this one's full. I'm going to go try and get you some footage of that sulfur butterfly that's flying around everywhere. It just went over there. And you can see this one just giving it a hard time. I'm guessing it's a female because I think it's wanting to lay some eggs. And this one looks like it's an orange barred sulfur because you can see the orange around the end of its wings. I don't know why it's laying eggs on my butterfly pea, but it is. Like, it's doing the whole egg laying move. Maybe it's just like, okay, any plant will do. I gotta get out of this wind. I'm just gonna lay my eggs wherever I find a spot. Look at her, she's laying eggs. I'm gonna go over there and look, see if I see actual eggs. Is there something about the butterfly pea that I don't know? Yeah, come on back over to the privet center. Nope, she went back to the butterfly pea. All right, you guys. Y'all see that little white dot? That is a sulfur egg. She did lay eggs on it. Look here, she is. What is that? I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take a cutting of this in and see what happens to it. I'm gonna do some more research on this plant. Look, there's another egg there. That's unbelievable. 